So this week, we're still working with the vanishing point and drawing in one point perspective. So even if on the second day of class, you're doing a copy of artwork, uh, you're going to want to find where the eye level line is and where the vanishing point is. And for the copy, if you just start following where some of the angles are, where some of the lines in the drawing are going, like in this Malay copy that I'm doing, uh, you, if you follow the floor lines, the divisions in the stones and the floor, they're leading to a point on the right, and it's a little bit, I believe, below the midpoint. And uh, if you start with just a rectangle on your paper for where your drawing is going to exist, you can use the whole sheet if you want, if it corresponds to the dimensions of the um, painting or drawing that you're working from. But for, for me, I wanted to draw a rectangle within the larger paper so that um, if I needed to move things a little bit, <coughs> I could. If I wanted to change where the edge of the drawing was, I could. And uh, if you do just a rough layout at first, where you just take that rectangle that you're working in, and you look for the main shapes, and you divide that whole rectangle up into clear sections, it'll really help you with the proportions and not running out of room for things. The Malay copy that I'm looking at, uh, the figure, the baker, that's putting the bread in the oven, uh, she takes up a fair amount of the picture, picture, so she comes down low in the drawing. Her feet come down low, and then her head is up above the midpoint of the drawing, or um, also up above the eye level. But you can see, if you did a little bit of layout of the room, the ceiling, the beams of the ceiling, and the floor lines are all leading to a point over on the right hand side, not quite to the edge of the, going to the edge of the paper, but, um, and I have a diagram that's at the start of this video, of course, with the red lines where I mapped out where the lines are going or where the vanishing point would be. And there, he's getting a lot of information from that one point, even about the lines on the left wall and the, the stone, the uh, oven that she's putting the bread into. That's all drawn, uh, the right side of it is drawn with the stones angling towards the vanishing point. So I'm trying to divide that rectangle that I'm working in up into clear sections, and you're dividing the room up into sections too, like where's the back wall, where's the left wall with the oven, and then where is she, how much room does she take up in that rectangle. So if you can do the rough layout like that, it doesn't have to look like much for a little while because I tend to have to move things around as I'm drawing. So I need to have a little flexibility where if I need to move the, her arm, I can do that without having to change and rework everything or to undo all the work that I've done. So I want to do some looser, um, quicker lines that I can erase easily or move easily if I need to. And in this copy, uh, if you do the outlines of the forms, and you're working yeah, with the outlines of the shapes that you're looking at, that you're copying, um, what I'm doing here is I'm starting to also do on top of the outline stage, or the just the line stage, I'm doing, I'm taking a piece of graphite, a graphite stick. You have one of them in your drawing kit. It's shiny. It's the same stuff as the pencil that's in the pencil. It's not the charcoal. It's a shinier material. Uh, again, it's but you don't have to sharpen it. It's just in a rectangular form. And I can turn it on its side like we did with the charcoal. And I can rub a big area of graphite or uh, lay in a big area of tone quickly with the graphite stick. Then I can work it into the paper with my fingers or a paper towel or a rag. But then on top of that outline stage or rough stage where you did the layout of everything, you can quickly get a sense of where the light and dark uh, is in the, in the copy. So I'm also just trying to take that rectangle and divide it into sections of this is light, this is dark. I can tell the a lot of the figure on the right side is light, and then on her left side, uh, it's darker. 
the stone floor is lighter. A lot there's a lot of dark tone in the background, uh, on the ceiling beams, and in the back of the room. So if you took again the big sections and just break it down in terms of what big sections are light, what big sections are dark, you can get quickly get a sense of the whole thing, even if you don't get all the detail that you want. You can get an overall sense of the composition and what's going on with the light and shadow.